So, um, all right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we previously worked on is we worked on graphs, we worked on solving them, right? And the problems I did were pretty basic, weren't they? You just add to the other side and then square root. Or you square root it and then you add it to the other side, right? Yes. It's pretty basic. However, what happens when we come up to a problem that we have an x squared and an x term? When you, ha when you come up to a problem like this, we have to understand we're going to have to solve by factoring. So I'm going to tell you kind of two different things you guys need to learn. The first thing is I'm asking you to find the solutions, right? So that means we need to create this from a function to an equation. So just like I'm going to find the zeros, I now need to set my f of x equal to 0. Because remember, what we're trying to find out is we want to find out where our graph crosses the x-axis, right? If here's my x-axis and here's my f of x, we want to find out when does the graph cross this x-axis. Because at that x-axis, f of x equals 0. So I set this equal to 0, and I say, all right, what values equal, what values of x make this true? And here's what almost all students do that are confused. They add 16 to the other side. Because why? Because that's what they're used to in algebra 1, right? So then they get 16 equals x squared minus 6x. And then they're like, um, 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 well, factor, factor. Oh, I got a factor, so I can factor out an x. This is all wrong, by the way. So then they factor out the x, and then they get x minus 6. And then they're like, um, OK, I don't know what to do anymore. I quit. I'm going to move on to the next problem. All right? So let's just go through, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go through. I've seen it way too many times, so I had to point it out. That's just all wrong. Um, there's a couple, actually, they did some mathematical components that aren't bad. But we got to make sure, unless you have your two point, unless you have like two values, which you know you can uh, either factor out or add to the other side, when you have what we call a trinomial, when you have three terms, the best way that I want to remind you guys to do this, until you get really good at your factoring, make sure you understand the quadratic e function, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm going to show you a way to always kind of test these. And you guys should be kind of used to these with the diamond problems, maybe some of you. I like the diamond. OK, some of you might have learned them, some of you are not. If you're not, here's what you do. You can take your a times your c and multiply them up top. Now, whenever you have your a as 1, it's going to be pretty basic because it's going to be 1 times negative 16 is always going to be negative 1 16. Then you take your b and you put it on the bottom. So the b, in my case, is a negative 6. Then what I like to do is I like to put a dot and a plus. So the dot up top tells me to multiply, and the plus tells me to add. So what I need to do is I need to find two values, two numbers that multiply to give me negative 16, but then add to give me negative 6. And what we do out of those two, where we draw those numbers, is we take the factors of negative 16, and we say out of those, because remember, factors are two numbers that multiply, right? So if you're going to have number, two numbers that multiply to get a negative 16, it has to be out of your factors of 16. So you guys seen anything so far yet? Um, so which one of these multiply to give you, they all multiply to give you negative 16, but which one of those add to give you negative 6? Negative 8 and 2. Right. So what I do then, ladies and gentlemen, is I rewrite my problem as a product of two what we call factors. All right. So what we do is we write it as a multiplication problem. And you guys really need to understand this. We'll go through this a little bit more next class period. <laughs> So we write it as a multiplication of two, pro, uh, of two factors. And the reason being is because if this times this equals 0, then, both, then one of them has to equal 0. So we can set it up into two separate equations. Because think about it this way. If I said a times b equals 0, if a was 5, what does b have to be? If a times b equals 0. If a is 5, what is b? Yeah. 0. 
Let's say A is negative 1 fifth. What is B? Zero. Right? Then they both can be 0. That's why we set them both equal to 0. And then you solve. 8. So x equals negative 2. So that means my graph, my graph crosses this x-axis. It has two solutions. Remember we talked about it either has 1, 2, or none. So my graph crosses at negative 2 and at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. So that's how you guys go ahead and find that with the factory. OK? It's not bad. We have some more difficult ones and stuff like that to go through.